All right, here we go. We're going to do a quick lesson on the inverse cosine function. All right. Well, let's look at the regular normal cosine function. Again, normal cosine runs from a max of 1 on the unit circle down to a, a, a 0, then a min, then a, a, a 0, and then a max. So uh, max, 0, min, 0, max is the way cosine normally runs from positive 1 to negative 1 the unit, around the unit circle. Uh, we're used to seeing that as cosine x equals y. So we put, if we put in some x value, we will get some y value out. However, when we do the inverse cosine function, now, once again, with an inverse, we have to make sure that we restrict some things because an inverse function has very specific requirements. One is that it has to be a one-to-one -one function, meaning one x and one y. It must pass the horizontal line test. So in order for it to be an inverse cosine function, it must pass the horizontal line test. It must also reflect about the y equal x axis. And it must contain the situation where the domain, the domain becomes the range, right? What was an x becomes a y value, and what was a y value becomes an x. So we notice that when uh, we deal with inverse functions, the inverse, uh, or the, the domain and the range switch places, okay? So inverse function, uh, since we, oops, that's the sign, on an inverse cosine function, now our domain will be restricted from zero as theta to pi, all right? So we are going to restrict theta from 0 to pi. And the reason why, again, because we have to pass the horizontal line test. So if we were to have this whole function in there, we would not pass the horizontal line test. Horizontal line test it says it cannot intersect at two different points on there. It must only intersect at one point. So when we do that, we're fine. Again, vertical line test, cosine function passes all the way along. Uh, as well as the inverse, but as soon as we get in the inverse now, we're concerned with a horizontal line test. All right, so what does that mean for us? What are we trying to do with this? Well, again, we are trying to find angles, right? We use inverse to find the angles. So when we were putting in uh, angles before we were getting values around your unit circle, you could say, what's the cosine of pi over 4? And that was an angle you input and then you would get square root of 2 over 2 as an example. Now we want to do is we want to say, well, hmm, what if I had square root of 3 over 2, and what would that angle produce? We could find that with cosine inverse. So uh, that's what we use it for. Now, let's look at an example. It says, example 1, use the unit circle to find trig values and angles. All right, so here we go. A is... The cosine of pi over 4, well, this is an angle. What do we get out? We get square root of 2 over 2. If I put use the cosine inverse feature and I put the, the y value in, then we will get the x or the angle back out, right? The cosine inverse of root 2 over 2 is pi over 4. So see how they just swap places? Cosine of 5 pi over 6 of the angle, what is the... What is the value of the cosine? If you look at your unit circle, it's negative root 3 over 2. Again, if we want to find the angle, we use cosine inverse. The cosine inverse of that same uh, value of the cosine, negative root 3 over 2. If you look at your unit circle, right, your good friend the unit circle here, if we use that, then we'll get, well, geez, Negative root 3 over 2 as a cosine is at 5 pi over 6. Or if I go down here into quadrant uh, 3, I also get 7 pi over 6. So what we have to do is, well, we're looking for the inverse. So the better answer for us right now is the 5 pi over 6 because we're dealing with the inverse property. All right, even though cosine does have 7 pi over 6, and it is negative 3 over 2 as a value. When we're looking for the inverse, we want the exact value. All right, so your calculator also will only calculate from 0 to pi. 
So zero to pi. So on your unit circle, choose a different color, but highlight from zero to pi and label it as cosine inverse. Label it as cosine inverse. Do that because then you'll know those are the values that we're looking for. All right? Your calculator only sees zero to pi, so that is quadrants what? One and two. So quartile quadrant one and quadrant two, right? All right. Let's look at another example. Use your unit circle or your calculator to find theta. All right, so cosine inverse of 1 half. Well, we get pi over 3 if I look at my unit circle, or I get 5 pi over 3. And I have to ask myself, well, which one of those is in quadrant 1 or quadrant 2? Well, 3 pi over 3 would be at pi, so that one has to be greater than pi. So that must mean this is a good answer. And also, my calculator told me it was at 60 uh, degrees. Make sure your uh, calculator is in degree mode if you want degrees uh, value. Cosine inverse of negative 1 half. Well, the calculator is going to tell me that it's 120, but on my unit circle, I get 2 pi over 3, or I get 4 pi over 3. Which one of those is in the realm of 0 to pi? 2 pi over 3. Cosine inverse of negative root 2 over 2. On the unit circle, it tells me it's at 3 pi over 4 or 5 pi over 4. My calculator says it's at 135 degrees. So I need to look, think quadrant 1 or quadrant 2. Well, 3 pi over 4 is in quadrant 2. So that would be the better answer. Again, we want to look at the context of the question. What are they asking us? If we're looking for exact values, we want to make sure we stay within cosine inverse. If we're just looking for an angle measure that has a cosine value of negative root 2 over 2, then we could answer either one. So when we go to solve problems, we'll be looking at that, all right? So anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Go back, review it, study it a bit more. We will do more in class. Have a great day.